Hi guys, it's me George, and today I'm going to be doing a book review, um, which is long, um, it's a, lo a long time coming, um, of Cunning Folk and Familiar Spirits, um, Shamanistic Visionary Traditions in Early Modern British Witchcraft and Magic, um, by Emma Wilby, and this book um, is from Sussex Academic Press, and it is um, an academic book. Um, this book is around 313 pages, including the index. Um, and for me, um, one of the things I found um, about this book is that if you are considering having a working relationship with a familiar spirit, and you are weighing it up, and it's something that you are considering, or you have had a familiar spirit come to you, and you are unsure, and things like that, um, or if, like, a lot of viewers that I have, you, you know, you have a lot of questions about the familiar spirit, read this book. <laughs> um, this book will answer a lot of questions that I have been sent online. Um, this book will also answer a lot of questions in regards to, um, the working dynamic relationships between um, people and their familiar spirits, between witches and cunning folk and their familiar spirits. I think in order for somebody to get a deeper understanding of the familiar spirit, I think this is very integral. Um, I think this book is a very um, important book to read um, because I, I do think from an academic perspective, it shows, um, it really portrays the ways in which the, the dynamics of the relationships people would have had with their spirits. So for instance, this book is not only academic, it is also psychological and it is also anthropological as well. So this book, first and foremost, what I really enjoyed, talks about actually how um, people would have lived in the early modern period and of course we get a lot of books that um you know will say people done this people done that and here's what some people were said to do with familiar spirits but it doesn't really go into the ways the way of life the the quality of life that people lived or but for better still of a word the lack of quality of a life that people lived um and this book to me really um it highlighted um, a lot of things to me and I couldn't help but draw a comparison towards certain issues um, people may have now um, these days um, to way back when um, and it really sort of showed the the dramatic difference between them um, so this book goes into sort of saying at first you know people would have lived 80% of people would have lived a very hand-to-mouth life um, pestilence and disease was around every corner because nobody had any advances on medicine, science, technology, none of that was there. So there was no preventative cures. Um, disease and pestilence, if you got ill, a lot of the time you died because there was nothing there to kind of help you in that sense. Um, and, you know, it talked about if your crops failed, you died. If your cattle died, your family died. Um, and one of the things it talks about is also about the, the great injustice that a lot of people suffered um, through not complying with the rules and the laws of the land. Um, and I think to me, it, it really gives somebody, in order to understand a relationship between a familiar spirit and a practitioner from the early modern period, a person should understand what the early modern period actually entailed. Um, and I think this is fantastic in order to do that. It, what I found fascinating with this book is it draws um, comparisons between the working relationship of the practitioner and the familiar spirit in early modern Britain. And it draws from shamanic cultures and practices around the world with the shamans and their um, spirit helpers and draws parallels and comparisons in regards to um, how the relationships were very similar and uses references. The author has really done their research here and, and obviously spoken to people that practice shamanism that have had that calling from the spirits. Um, and I found that really interesting because I think, to me, I've always seen that shamanic element to witchcraft and it's something that always has been, to me, an integral part of um, folk magic and witchcraft. Um, in particular, 
the familiar spirit and working with the ally or the puck or whatever you want to call the familiar spirit. Um, it then also not only goes on about that, but it also talks about how, from a psychological perspective, um, people undergo different series of mystical encounters throughout their life. So we'll talk about how the average Joe has a mystical encounter uh, compared to how somebody like a shaman or a, a, you know, a witch will have a mystical encounter. Um, it's very, very interesting. And I like the fact that it talks about psychology here because I think sometimes as, as a practitioner, and I think everybody has this as a human, um, you do have those moments where you think, am I just slightly mad? You know, And I think everybody at one point has that that thought, every magical practitioner I've spoken to over the years has said that, you know, and made a joke of it. But this book kind of reassures you that actually you're not, and that a lot of cultures and a lot of beliefs from around the world have have had these spiritual encounters. Um, and for me, I think it's it's fantastic in the sense of that that element of psychology, because you can get into the human psyche and the relationship between humanity and the mystical um, and it was it was fascinating it was really really fascinating I also think as well for me as a practitioner working with familiar spirits it actually gave me ideas through looking through historical events and um, through looking at different um, sort of things that people would do um, but also kind of t through the um, drawing through the other aspects of the shamanic belief um, and then comparing it with cunning folk practices. So for me, it also gave me ideas, it gave me things to do um, in order to help that, uh, help and establish that working relationship between myself as a practitioner and my familiar spirits. And of course, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into what the actual ideas I got were, because I think people should just read this book. Um, but the, the book itself is is really, really enjoyable. And as I said, I'm nearly at the end of the book, but I couldn't wait to give a review to this book because I think there's not there's a lot of books out there that, of course, you know, all very good books as well. This is not a read. I'm not being shady or anything like that. Uh, there are a lot of books out there that talk about historical witchcraft and we may have a chapter on the familiar spirit and we may... But I think in, in general, I don't think the familiar spirit is an area covered as much as it should be in comparison to the historical evidence we have of British folk magic, cunning folk and witchcraft. Um, throughout history, the, the spirit ally, the familiar spirit has been a fundamental part of witchcraft. Um, and there are a lot of modern witchcraft traditions that do not include that that element. And that's not me knocking them, you know, each to their own. People practice differently. That's fine. Um, but I think there are not enough books to talk about the familiar spirit. And I think there needs to be more books like this um, in order to help somebody from a modern um, period establish a deep working connection with the familiar spirit. I'm proper waffling on. I'm sorry, but this book really genuinely got me excited. Um, and it, it, it was fantastic. I, I really find it interesting. It speaks about the working relationships. It also speaks about um, the meeting between the human and the spirit and often talks about how at times a familiar spirit would appear to somebody at a pivotal point, um, normally a traumatic point in their life, some of bereavement, an illness, a sickness, things like that, but also how sometimes the spirit would appear when they were doing really mundane things like, you know, sweeping up, doing the washing, um, you know, collecting herbs for medicine, things like that, and how the familiar would approach the practitioner and then sort of, you know, speak to them and come towards them. It also speaks about the renunciation and the pact, and again, draws from shamanic elements um, and compares that to um, accounts we have of the um, the renunciation and pact between the witch and the familiar spirit, or the cunning folk and familiar spirit. So yeah, overall, I would strongly recommend this book. I, I really enjoyed this book, and I think this book is a... There needs to be more books out like this um, in regards to the describing the, the familiar spirit, because I think 
I have always said this and, you know, so as far as I'm aware, I always will say this, but I, I am a strong believer in that the familiar spirit for me is a fundamental part of witchcraft and folk magic. Um, and obviously people will think different and that's fine. It's just my personal opinion. Um, if you think differently as you are, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Um, but it's my personal opinion. And I do believe, um, I do think that we should have um, more books out like this describing this relationship because it, it really is incredible. Um, it's incredible to look from a psychological perspective as well from the book. Um, yeah, all over, I, I highly recommend this book and I think anybody that hasn't read this book or is, once again is thinking about establishing a relationship with a familiar spirit and working with the familiar spirit within their own practice, give that book a read. Over and out and Peace. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.